I'm Taylor. And welcome to Square Mile of Murder! Today is the first of our Halloween spooky mysterious bonus episodes. Yeah. And there is an episode out every day up till Halloween. You're welcome. Full disclosure, we're taking a week off in November. <laughs> yeah. Are we, are we just doing one? We could do two after this many episodes, I feel like. <laughs> No, because I've already got the program filled in for November. Oh, uh, yes, and I know how much you hate to change dates in the little table in the program. So. Exactly. <laughs> so, new episode every day. Friday's bonus episodes are just for Patreon, which is usual. Patreon bonus episodes normally come out on a Friday. Uh, but as a special thank you, they're available for every one of our patrons. So for just one pound, you get two extra bonus episodes. Plus, there's a few other special patron posts from yes. last year and a few other times that are available to everyone as well. Yeah, we've got a, a handful of like all tiers um, bonuses. If you want, want a few extras, it's only a pound. Yep. For today's episode... We've got a case which we were originally going to include in our Ancient Serial Killer month, mm -hmm. but for reasons which will eventually become clear, we decided to save it for Halloween. So this is the story of Christman Jenepatanga, which we have probably pronounced wrong, but um, I think that's how the lady on Google Translate said it. <laughs> we're going to go with her and and try Try to imitate as best as possible, but knowing us, it'll probably go all, you know, upside down somewhere. So you're just going to have to bear with us. Uh, so, cri 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 how did you just say that? <laughs> Chrisman. Chrisman Genepatainga was from Corpin, a town just outside of Cologne, uh, born sometime in the 16th century. That's all you're getting. That's all we know. So sometime in the 16th <laughs> century. So like 1500s. That's it. Sometime in that 100 year span. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You know, what's 100 years amongst friends? Uh, so, uh, we also know nothing about his childhood. It's going to be one of those guys. What we do know is that he was a cave-dwelling highwayman who began his life of crime in 1569. And you know, here on Square Mile of Murder, we love a cave-dwelling highwayman. <laughs> I, I I'm not saying it. I'm saving it for the end. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. We'll get there. Don't worry, guys. We'll get there. Uh, this cave was located in a rural area called Frasberg, which is in eastern Germany uh, between Cologne and Frankfurt and close to the borders with Luxembourg, Belgium, and France, and not too far from the Dutch border, border either. So basically in an area of Europe with a lot of borders and a lot of people passing through, which as you might imagine is perfect territory for a highwayman. Uh, while most of us think of cave dwellings as being very basic and even primitive, uh, Jennifer setup was reportedly much more sophisticated and possibly even resembled a normal house with a series of rooms, chambers, and even a cellar. <laughs> gonna, sounds, like a, sounds like a nice place to live. Yeah. I also love that this area of Europe, there's just so many countries that all, like, the borders just all meet. I, I also love this this part of Europe yeah. as well, like, I love. Um, when I was a kid, we took a trip to the Netherlands when I was eight, and we went to Dry London Punt, which is the meeting place of Germany Belgium and the Netherlands. <laughs> and so we like had dinner in Germany and went for a walk mm -hmm. in Belgium. Yeah. I uh, just love stuff like that. <laughs> I do as well. I literally just a few days ago, uh, I was talking to my auntie because F six years ago, 
this month, we were on a coach trip with, so it was my auntie's best friend, the friend's sister-in-law. So the the best friend and her sister-in-law, they each took a friend with them. Mm-hmm. And so my auntie went, but the sister-in-law, her friend couldn't go and it was all paid for. Mm-hmm. And I was, um, I was out of work at that time. And so, like, a week before, they're like, who do we know who would like to go who has, like, a passport and nothing to do next week? And my auntie was like, well, she's 40 years younger. It, so it's, <laughs> and, that's, that's, you know what? Why not? <laughs> so, so my auntie rang, rang me and I was like, free holiday? Yes, please. <laughs> and, yeah, it was like, on the south coast of England like a long weekend but one of the days we went to Belgium nice and I love that once you're on the continent there's just so many places you can go yeah I'm very upset about Brexit this week (laughs) that's the thing I'm upset about this week (laughs) fair enough but yeah like you get the ferry across to Calais and the the day trip was Bruges and uh, like within two hours, we were in Bruges eating chocolate. I fucking love Bruges. That is one of the coolest cities. Anyway, back to the Middle Ages. <laughs> According to an article by Grunge.com, Jennifer Tyinger began his life of crime as the head of a gang of robbers and thieves nice. who would prey on travellers passing through the region. Essentially an organised gang of highwaymen. It's like early organised crime, basically. Yeah. Uh, whilst many of these gangs of bandits would travel around, not staying in one place for too long, Jenny Patanga built his house cave, cave house, cave house, and he and his men operated in the area for over a decade undetected. They didn't move around anywhere. That's impressive. Yeah. So gangs of thieves and bandits, highwaymen general area uh was all on the rise across europe in the 16th century seemingly nobody was safe rich poor young old if you had something that could be stolen you were at risk previously individuals or like small groups of robber robbers bandits whatever uh worked the highways but by the mid to late 16th century they were now joining up to form large roving gangs who just moved around the continent without being caught damn so we don't know how many men were part of uh jenny patanga's gang of bandits or who they were we only know him and you'll soon find out why but there it is has been recorded and verified there was a group in the netherlands in this time made up of 49 former shepherds. So this was in like the late medieval ages. Damn. And they just roved around this part of Western Europe. That sounds terrifying. I don't think the sheep were with them, though. It's just shepherds. That's worse somehow. Like, I feel like the sheep would at least be comforting. Have you seen sheep in the middle of the night? They are terrifying. That's true. Also, they have those, like, creepy like square pupils and that that fucks me up every time Mm. oh god um yeah that's a lot of roving thieves (laughs) yeah uh i just thought i don't think i have 49 people i actually like spending time with let alone want to go on a crime spree with i don't know that i know 49 people According to Facebook, I know more than that, but I can't think That's of people the thing, like, I like. Throughout the course of my life, I have met at least 49 <laughs> people. Mm. But I don't think they'd join me to go thieving. Yeah. And how would you control? No, yeah, like, there, there are so many issues with this plan. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by their abilities. Hmm. So, while Jennifer Tynga's criminal career began by just robbing those traveling in the area, he soon transitioned into murdering them as well, as all good highwaymen do. Uh, According to the article by Grunge.com, once Jennifer Tynga began killing, 
he, quote, got a taste for it and just kept on going. Uh, but soon it wasn't just travelers who were in danger. Now, you remember how a few minutes ago Kat said that we, we don't have any idea about who else was in this little merry band of thieves or who they were? Well, that's because pretty soon Jennifer got sick of sharing the spoils with his accomplices. So after killing the initial victims and robbing them, he would then poison his fellow bandits and keep the spoils for himself. That's just rude. Yeah, very sneaky. Uh, now you might be thinking, first, where is he finding all of these accomplices? Because who wants to work with you and all of your staff, when all of your employees keep mysteriously disappearing? That's just bad management when you really think about it. Hmm. I mean, nobody wants to work for a company with a high staff turnover. No. It's an immediate red flag. Yeah, exactly. If that's what you're wondering, uh, we don't know, basically. We don't know where he was finding all these people. If there's like a, like a casting call out in like Highwaymen magazine or what was going on, <laughs> something. Um, and you might also be thinking, what was he doing with the bodies? Well, according to Wikipedia, because there's not a lot of sources on this guy, uh, in his cave house, Jennifer Tynga had a mine shaft. As one does. Always. Uh, I clean mine every Thursday. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I don't clean mine. No. No. I'm going to have to get a mine shaft sweep in there someday. <laughs> like soot builds up from what I hear. I do actually live between two massive mines, though. <laughs> Within, like, one's a few miles away and one's like 15 miles away. Also, it's like a it's like a, a, a communal mine shaft. Yeah, so if we did have a communal mine shaft, we might fall into one of the deepest mines in Europe. Sounds fun. Mm. Uh, yeah, so he had this mine shaft in his cave house. And after killing someone, he would just throw their body into the mine shaft. Uh, but that mine shaft was pretty busy because over the course of his crime spree, Jenna Batanga was killing at a rate of six per month. Uh, and that was just the start. He was about to get a whole lot worse. In 1574, Jennifer Tanga met a young woman who he initially intended to be one of his murder victims. But then he decided that robbing her and killing her wasn't bad enough. Uh, Jennifer Tanga decided that this young woman, whose name we don't even know, all we know is that she was the daughter of a local cooper, as person that puts does something with barrels. Yes. I was going to say puts the rings around the barrels, but I think that's a hooper, not a cooper. Something with barrels, definitely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this young woman, he decided, was going to be his sex slave. Oh boy. Which, I hate that phrase. Yeah. He kidnapped a woman and decided to literally chain her up in his cave so she couldn't escape while he went out thieving and murdering. And then just raped her. For years. Fantastic. I, I read in some sources that he, you know, they claimed that he, like, quote, took a mistress. And my blood pressure still has not returned to normal since I read that. That's fair. Because if you, if you kidnap someone and chain them up, that is serial rape. That is not having a mistress. Yeah. It's just like, it, it took a mistress. No, no. No. Clearly not. That is not what happened here. If your mistress wants to be chained to the bed. Fine. That is between two consenting adults. But like, this is not that. If that wasn't bad enough. Jennifer Tyinger fathered six children with this woman. And murdered each of these children as soon as they were born. The babies were spared. The mine shaft burial, though, 
and skip forward about 10 seconds if you don't want to hear what he did to the children because I can't think of what kind of trigger warning to say right now. I'll put in a, um, a chapter marker so you can just skip to the next chapter. Okay. Instead of the mine shaft, he hung the children's dead bodies up so that they moved in the wind like some kind of grotesque wind chime. Nope. Don't like that. No. 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 I think the less said about that, the better. Yeah. Uh, so Jennifer Tynga's reign of terror lasted for 13 years until the spring of 1581 when the woman who he had taken prisoner finally convinced him to let her go into the nearby town of Burncastle Cuse. He agreed to let her leave, but made her take a new oath not to betray him. Uh, but when she got to the town and saw people going about their daily lives, um, in particular the sight of the children playing in the street, uh, that pushed her to her breaking point because it reminded her of what she had lost. The woman broke down in tears, wailing and weeping in the middle of the street, but when people tried to console her and help her, she refused to tell them what was wrong, claiming she couldn't tell them because she had taken an oath not to betray Jenna Patanga. Uh, they took her to the mayor, who, along with some quote-unquote learned men, which... Is that not an oxymoron? <laughs> I mean, um, possibly. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get some incels really mad at us. Apparently I'm feeling very misandrist today, but you know what? Yeah. It's fine. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, so these learned men used scriptures to convince the young woman that she ought to confess because it was a matter of life and soul. Um, not often that uh, a group of men have used scriptures for good no. to convince someone to do something. <laughs> Hi, I'm 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 firing on all barrels tonight. <laughs> apparently, yeah. <laughs> Um, we seem to have swapped roles. I know, what the fuck? <laughs> You're just out offending everyone and I'm just done with life. <laughs> oh, God. Anywho. Um, yeah, so after telling the people of the town about her seven-year-long ordeal, the men of the town devised a plan to catch Jennifer Tynga unaware. Uh, the woman was given a sack of peas... Sure. And as she made her way back to the cave, she left a trail of peas <laughs> so that the local men could find the cave later when Jennifer Tanger was not likely to be on high alert or concerned that someone had followed the woman back to the cave. How many different fairy tales does this story <laughs> bastardize and combine together? All oh, we've got them. a bit on that later. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, that was the plan they came up with. Good lord. <laughs> so on May 27th, 1581, and yeah, we don't know the date that she went into town, so we don't know if this was the same day or another day, uh, 30 local men stormed the cave. Presumably it would be like within a few days, because otherwise the peas would have been eaten by animals. <laughs> or like lost to the weather they'd be washed away or blown away <laughs> i mean just imagine like how horrible it would be if your brilliant plan peas were eaten by fucking sheep <laughs> <laughs> oh. i mean the sheep are out of control because the shepherds are all off in the roving they're either thieving gang. or they're in the mine shaft so you know that this this county is overrun with sheep. They're hungry. They like peas. It's <laughs> it's not a good plan. They should have picked some other form of 
you know, proverbial breadcrumb. Or actual bread. Or actual. I mean, but then that's a waste of bread. It's a waste of bread as well. Yeah. So. So when the men entered the cave, after they followed the peas, (laughs) Jennifer Tyinger shouted to the woman that had he known she would betray him, he would have killed her a long time ago. Oh. Charming. Totally. Uh, after he was arrested and removed from the cave, the uh, men from the town explored the cave house system and began removing Jennifer Tanga's ill-gotten gains, which, according to a list on Wikipedia, included, but likely is not limited to, wine, dried and salted meats, suits of armour, mm. firearms and other weapons, coins, train trade goods and a very detailed diary Hmm. Mm. the diary detailed every one of jennifer tanga's 964 victims and what valuables he had taken from each of them that seems unlikely hmm Uh, Jennifer Tyinger not only confessed to these murders, but also lamented that he had not reached his goal of 1,000 murders. Oh, come on! (laughs) And that he would have been happy had he got to his goal. Oh, God. He was found guilty, unsurprisingly. Yeah, that's it. Uh, And was sentenced to being broken on the wheel until death. Yikes. So we've explained in a previous episode what the wheel is. Every other time I've read about the wheel, it's ended with someone being either beheaded or hung. Like, they haven't died on the wheel. Yeah. So if you don't know what the wheel is, it's Catherine Wheel. It's also known as. It's basically a big wagon wheel, which a person is attached to by having their limbs broken and, like, threaded through the spokes and just tortured fun so you are literally broken on the wheel and after you've been tortured normally hung beheaded something you were killed in some way not this time <laughs> God. the execution lasted nine days so he was tortured on the wheel broken on the wheel for nine days but they kept reviving him with some kind of, like, tonic drink to ensure that he suffered as much as possible. But then on the ninth day, he's, like, his heart packed in and he died. I hope that that executioner put in for some overtime. (laughs) Maybe they were in shifts. I hope so, because that's a long... That's a long time. Nine days. Nine... I mean... I mean, I know, like, being, like, it was medieval torture. Yes. And, like, thanks to Quentin Tarantino and Pulp Fiction, you know, getting medieval on one's ass <laughs> is a thing. Yes. But, and so, like, the concept of the wheel is horrific, mm-hmm. and as it's meant to be. Mm-hmm. Like, having your limbs broken and threaded through spokes. But for nine days... Yeah. That's over a week. How I don't know how he didn't have a heart attack before that. Uh, yeah, that's 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 the thing. Like all of that mm. fresh cave air just really fortified his heart, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you might have noticed my sort of incredulity in 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 commenting on this case because there's a no. problem there's like a little problem here with the story of uh Chrisman Jenna, Jennifer Tanga um and the problem is that uh the story's probably not true if you if you hadn't guessed that yet <laughs> yeah yeah uh so we first learned 
of Jenna Batanga from a listicle about ancient serial killers, which is what gave us the idea for a themed month about, appropriately enough, ancient serial killers. Uh, however, when we did some more research into his crimes, we discovered that it's unlikely that Jenna Pertanga murdered almost a thousand people. Um, that is if he even existed at all, because there's no record of his birth. So that's an issue. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty big issue. Slight issue. Which is why we save it for Halloween. Yes. But his tale is far from unique. And in Germany alone, there were stories of numerous other serial killers and highwaymen. And some have been ac accepted as factual, like Peter Stump. And some are still debated over, like Peter Nyers. Uh, Wikipedia lists eight other highwaymen who allegedly operated uh, at the same time as Jenna Pertanga. All without references, though, so we can't really find anything else about them. Um, and and it's difficult because I have tried <laughs> googling these names, but th I mean they're not quite generic German names or stereotypical German names, but they're not far off. Yeah, which probably is probably for a reason when you think mm -hmm. about it. Um, but yeah, so that does go to show that there were plenty of stories about medieval highwaymen and murderers. Uh, the Grunge article we mentioned earlier points out that elements of Jenna Pertanga's story show up in a number of other folk stories and legends. Um, the Trail of Peas, for example, is found in Brothers Grimm stories. And there are a number of other similar tales about German highwaymen holding young women hostage in cave caves. <laughs> caves. <laughs> or you know how the lay people pronounce it caves <laughs> guys can you tell that it's 11 past 10 at night cause <laughs> think I've just hit hit that point <laughs> caves um which brother's Grimm story is it? I couldn't remember. I don't know. Like I would, I know it shows up. Yeah. In in like the old, like the original Grimm stories. Would it be like Hansel and Gretel? Like instead of Ooh, breadcrumbs, maybe. it's peas. Maybe. Why did they have peas? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, it. I read like it shows up in Grimm's, and I was thinking, no, yeah, it sounds familiar, but I can't think of the story. Yeah. Well, Other well, than Princess and the Pea. <laughs> I don't think it's that one. I don't one. think it's that one. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. As was alluded to earlier, like all of our medieval cases or just anything. Just all of our cases. <laughs> all roads lead to Sawney Bean. Yeah, yeah. Which is sometimes credited as the Scottish version of this case. Yeah. However, unlike Sawney Bean and other highwaymen such as Peter Nyers, there are no mentions of cannibalism or like superhuman abilities or black magic associated with Jenny Pertanga uh, in the early tellings of his story. Centuries later, these embellishments do start to appear, mm -hmm. the mentions of cannibalism and superhuman powers. But in the original version, he was... A murderer, kidnapper, thief, rapist, scumbag piece of shit. But he was very much a human being. Mm. If he was real at all. Um, and that is the possibly true story of Chrisman Jennifer Tanga. Thoughts? I love a Sony Bean. You do love a Sony Bean. I love bean a Sony Bean. I mean, like, it is really similar. It's just, like, even down to the, like... It's just inland. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's inland, and, like, the cave isn't filled with, like... Bones. Bones or, or mutants 
begat from incest. Like, what? no, because he murdered because he all of murdered his them all. So, like, that's the main <laughs> difference there. Um, um, I, I, I do wonder if if the gremlin knew what she was starting she, when she no. asked us to do. There's no way. Sunny Bean. There's no way. <laughs> Does she know what kind of hell she has unleashed? Uh, I look if if our next like t shirt design doesn't have something to do with Sony Bean, like we should just stop right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Shh, shh. Mm. hush, hush. Wink, wink. I'm getting Nudge. I'm getting signals through the computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh god um yeah do you know what annoys me mm. so i think we can all agree this wasn't it probably wasn't real yeah and if if it was a real person he didn't kill to that extent no even in a made-up story they still couldn't give the woman a name <laughs> yeah i get if it was a real story, like her name's been lost to time, along with his accomplices and what have you, and his victims, but it's a fairy story. Could you not just give the woman a name? Just come on, you give her the most traumatic life story. Give her a name. Just call her Joan and be done with it. Joan, like Joan of Arc, who you know, okay, no, wheels, not Joan of Arc, which is also this story kind of reminds me of. Gilles de Ray as well, which has oh a Joan of Arc co connection. But because wasn't didn't I know I did this and you just commented on it, but didn't he like say, Oh, I wanted to get to X number of murders and then I'd be happy or something? I can't remember I can't to be either. honest. But I feel like that's a thing. So anyway, um it, does, it sounds familiar, but I think a lot of the like Especially the older cases, a lot of them have melded together. Yes, 100%. Just, and I think we said this when we talked about Sonny Bean, and I'm sure we said it when we talked about Jordy Byrne. Mm -hmm. um, but like, yeah, there were probably highwaymen in the area at the time, killing people yeah. and robbing them. Maybe some of them lived in a cave or two. Because yeah. that's a great, you know, pre-built shelter. Yeah. And and it was it has been well documented by histo like or well researched by historians that at this time is when highwaymen became really organized. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a documented group of forty the forty nine shepherds. So like it was definitely a thing, but like the one guy killing all his buddies, killing a thousand people, keeping a detailed diary. That's it's very convenient. Yeah. That's the thing that really to me is like, like flashing neon. This is fake because I'm sorry. He does not sound like. The kind of Even a wordsmith. Yeah. He does not sound like the type to sit down after a long day by firelight and write out <laughs> in I mean exquisite detail. If he's averaging six murders a month, he's uh, when is he finding the time? Yeah, right? Like to write. Also <sighs> that means Because I assume that the mine shaft and keeping that neat and tidy would take up a lot of time because how deep is this mine shaft? Yeah. To get 964 <laughs> bodies into it. Like, yes. It, 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 I just don't think that he would have the time to do that. So, you know, that's what really throws me off. Mm. But yeah. So. Yeah. So when we first sort of heard of this case and thought, Oh, we'll do it for ancient serial killers. I did some reading, which is when we found out it's probably not real. And I remember reading somewhere that it was kind 
like it's become like a like a bogeyman kind of story mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for kids in uh, in Germany and possibly other parts of like this region of Western Europe. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when I was so that was a couple of months ago when I read that, and then when I was doing the research for writing the script, I couldn't find that anywhere. Mm. Um, so potentially I made it up in my head, or. I just can't find the article again. So, and I know we do have at least one German listener. Yes. So please tell us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're in Germany, uh, let us know if you've heard of this lovely fellow before. Because I can see how it, like, high women make great bogeymen when you oh, want yeah. to keep kids from wandering off. Yeah. It kind of, it has a kind of like, now i don't know all the details of this story but i it was one of those things that was always floating around when when i was a kid like the legend of sleepy hollow like this this guy on a horse sweeping through the night kind of thing Mm. so like i could totally see this being like oh yeah well you've heard the story of chrisman jenna pertanga right yeah so yeah. So yeah. Let us know. It... So yeah. Um I don't think I have anything else to add. Great G- great great story. Like <laughs> I feel bad mm. saying like, "Oh wow, great great thousand murders story." <laughs> but like but, but I think we can because it's not because real. Because it's not real. That's the thing. Like yeah. It's just definitely not real. But like I do find these ones really interesting, especially with all mm-hmm. the overlaps in the different countries, the different cultures of like slight mm-hmm. variations, but there's a lot of commonality. Sorry, I remembered the other point I was going to make, uh, which is also kind of an open-ended question. <laughs> so you know when we did Sonny Bean at, and the Border Reavers as well, uh-huh. and we talked a lot about like the English propaganda against the Scots. Mm-hmm. I wonder if this feeds into that at all. Because mm. there seems to be a lot of stories, sort of folk tales and legends and stuff, about German highwaymen. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if that's just because I was researching a specific German highwayman and it just, you know, they all came up because that's the area I was looking at. Or if it's kind of like a my knowledge of this... <laughs> bit of Time European period. history is not great. Same. They don't teach us this in America. But yeah. I I just wonder if there was like any kind of if this was like part of like any kind of propaganda against like Germans. Yeah. No. Or Germany. I could totally see that. Well, especially because like the medieval time period was rife this hell on earth rife with conflict (laughs) in in europe so like i feel like everyone was warring with everyone in one way or six ways or another so like i could totally see that being a a thing and all so around this time period you've got all the all the the ruling families are all marrying each other to try and maintain alliances as well yeah so you've got, you've got the Tudors in 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 uh, well, Britain at that time. You've got I think you've got I think we have the Habsburgs at that time in the Aust- like Austro-Hungarian. Mm. But you've got I don't know about France. That I don't know anything about. But it's just interesting where all these modern borders are. Yeah. As to what borders were there, but then because obviously France had its own royal family as well, Mm. Germany did because like Queen Victoria, her husband, Mm -hmm. who was also a cousin, I believe, was from Germany. So there's a you know a German royal family somewhere. Uh, Um, Sax Sax Coburg, I believe. And the, they named, that's why they changed their name to Windsor. Because it didn't sound so great during 
after the First World War. That's it. <laughs> I knew, I knew it came about somewhere, and I didn't know that. Um, I've forgotten my point. Propaganda. That's but it. yeah, no, I think I, I I'd be curious to to know more about that because like I get to especially since there's so seems to be just like a a plethora of German murderous highwaymen. Yeah. This is apparently our brand now. Fake murdering highwaymen. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah. Christman Jennifer Tanga. There you go. I love it. Over and done with. I love it. Uh, and if you love it, and if you love hearing about all the the variations of this story, we've yeah. now this is three we're up to. I want to see how many we can get up to. <laughs> so yeah, if you like if you like that, be sure to rate and review us in your podcast app of choice especially apple podcasts because apple loves highwaymen uh and subscribe so you never miss a new episode i'm gonna get sued for saying that probably <laughs> uh uh now if you want some cool square mile of merch we have some and maybe a, a related design to this our most favorite of tales might appear in said merch store at some point in the not too distant future. We'll see. So if you want to check that out, you can go to squaremileofmurder.store or you can find the links in the show notes or on our website. We already plugged Patreon at the top of the show, but so yeah, check it sign out up for that if you want. Yeah. Um, but if you do uh, sign up for Halloween, remember that it renews automatically on the first of the month. So if you just want the extra Halloween episodes for a pound, which is like totally cool. We love everyone who comes to Patreon, yeah. no matter how long you stick around. We love you all. Remember to cancel before November 1st. Yes. Or it'll renew automatically. So yeah. Um, we will be back tomorrow with the first proper bonus episode because we're not normally here on a thursday that's right um also a very very short bonus episode just to ease you all in that's fine it's a good starting point i think yeah uh so we'll see you all then yeah thanks for listening thanks guys watch out for highwaymen <laughs> bye bye